Well, welcome back, and welcome back to Flip Videos for Course 1. Um, tonight's video is Lesson 7-3, and it is a problem-solving lesson, so I'm going to try to keep this one pretty short. Um, and basically, our problem-solving strategy is actually one that we've kind of seen before, um, but we're going we're gonna to talk about it very uh, succinctly um, and identify it and really just be very deliberate about it. Um, and basically, the strategy today is making an organized list. And this is a strategy that's helpful for a lot of different kinds of problem-solving. Okay, So any problem solving, of course, we're, we're reading the problem carefully uh, at least twice. We're reading it again at the end. Um, keeping an organized list for a lot of these problems is another strategy that we use pretty much all the time. So um, there's an example in the book, and the example in the book is pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, it's a great example about a girl named Tara. Okay, And let's say she is training to be in a marathon. And she is going to um, run uh, a certain distance each day. She's going to start with um, three miles. And each day, she's going to add three-fourths of a mile. Okay? And she's going to continue to build. Maybe she's not running a marathon. Maybe she's going to run a 10K, okay? uh, which is about 6.2 miles. All right. Well, let's take a look. Um, and the question in the book asks us, uh, at what point will Tara first run um, six miles or more? So this is a great problem uh, to go ahead and set up a table. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the days up here, okay? And we're going to put the distance that she runs each day over here. Okay, so on day one, the problem told us she starts going three miles. On day two, she goes an extra three-quarters of a mile, so she goes three and three-fourths of a mile. On day three, we have to add three-fourths to that, so that'll give us three and six-fourths. We can't really do that, so three and six-fourths reduces to, um, sorry, it's a four, reduces to three and three halves, which of course reduces to four and a half, okay? Day four, we're going to add another uh, three-fourths of a mile. That's going to bring us up to five and a quarter. And day five, add three-fourths to five and a quarter, and we're going to get six miles. And so the question asked, at what point do we first, does uh, Tara first go uh, six miles? And so the answer, based on the chart, will be uh, five days. Okay. Uh, another good example of a type of question that you can use an organized list for is one of those ones where you're trying to come up with all the possibilities. Um, so suppose you have 25 cents, you have one quarter, and suppose you have a dime, and another dime, and, an, and a nickel. Okay. How many different amounts of money could you get? Well, again, you can make an organized table, um, and what I would do is I would uh, essentially make a column for each of these. And then just uh, indicate whether or not you're going to have each one. All right. So the most money I could have, I could have one will mean that I have the coin, so I have all of them, and that would add up to uh, let's see, 40, that would add up to 50 cents. Okay. The next best I could do is I could have the quarter and both of the dimes, but no dime, and that would or no, I'm sorry, that would be a nickel. Okay, so no nickel, and that would add up to 45 cents. Okay, the next best that I could do is I could have one of the dimes and the nickel, and that adds up to 40 cents. And it doesn't really matter which one. These are interchangeable uh, if I'm only going to have one dime. Finally, I could have no dimes and a nickel, and that would equal 30 cents. I could have just the quarter, and that would be 25 cents. And then uh, I'll continue down. Now, those are all the ones with the quarter, but I could have uh, two dimes and no nickels. Okay, that'll give me 20 cents. And I think you can pretty much see at this point, uh, if I had one uh, dime, one nickel, I could get 15. If I had just one dime, that would be 10 cents. And if I had just one nickel, it would be 5. And then depending on how the question's worded, you could actually have a combination of zero. Usually you don't have that, though, um, because they're going to say, what are the different amounts of money you could have? Okay, so the total different combinations is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And again, if we're very systematic, we can keep track of all of them. That's basically... Okay, so as you can see, there's different kinds of problems. Keeping a nice, organized, systematic list uh, is really the way we want to deal with problems like this. Okay. Um, now, tomorrow in class, it is a problem-solving lesson, so I'm going to give you a, a little bit of uh, uh, leeway in terms of picking the problems you want to do. Um, so just get this idea in your head of really making a nice, organized list, um, and it's just really a nice tool to have in your pocket um, for when you're problem-solving. So there we go. So this is our first video from being back from a little while, uh, from a break, so um, we'll keep it short. Thanks for watching, and... Um, uh, tune in tomorrow uh, for the next lesson. In the meantime, we'll work on this problem-solving lesson in class tomorrow. Thanks, all.